chemical exfoliation is such an important topic. We talk about this all the time. Uh, we are actually just going to do a quick summary and also a refresh of some any new data that's out there. Um, but otherwise, we want to keep this kind of brief. Um, as brief as possible. <laughs> you're right. As brief as po possible. So um, first things first, uh, we got to blitz through the biology real quick. Why is chemical exfoliants so important? Gloria, care to comment? Why they're so important? Uh, mm -mm. <laughs> your cell is constantly turning over. Yes. If you don't like your skin, you should get yourself a whole new skin in two weeks, and your biology's got you covered on that. <laughs> but unfortunately, as we age, that process slows down. Yes. And um, when that what that means is these dead cells, well, the top layer of your skin, your shine cornea, they are dead cells, but when that starts to build up, it leads to a cascade of unwanted things like dry skin, yeah. scaly skin, mm -hmm. and it becomes Dull like a texture. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And it becomes a vicious cycle because dry skin begets more dry skin. So yes, it just yay. compounds and becomes more and more of a stubborn problem. So that's where chemical exfoliants come in to just make sure cell turnover is really keeping to its schedule. Um, and so, yeah, uh, with that, there's actually three categories of chemical exfoliants. We have your PHAs, AHAs, and BHAs. Um, I'm gonna run us through the first category of PHAs. They are your biggest, largest molecule size. Um, they are, you can think of these as the most gentle of the bunch, and at low levels can actually be considered a humectant as well, similar to lactic acid that we've talked about before. Um, our main guys, are gluconolactone and lactobionic acid. Yeah. And just so you know, these are relatively newcomers to the skincare scene. And I think we talked about some of the science behind it a few yeah. times, but since we're doing this episode, we did a refresher and Victoria found some great new studies to mm -hmm. um, kind of help you understand more about what they do for your skin. Yeah. So if you've um, listened to us before, we've mentioned that target concentration is roughly about 14%. That's because there are a couple studies that mention how um, one it can actually be helpful even in treating acne at 14%. They compared it to a 5% BPO and found it to function basically on par. Um, but what, as we dabbled, we noticed some interesting things. Um, one, oh, actually, before I get into that, mm -hmm. quick refresher is um, when they looked into gluconolactone because it's a larger mo molecule, chemical exfoliation is happening at the surface. Um, they actually mentioned that you may not need sunscreen while using this chemical exfoliant. Mm. Um, but we always say best uh, uh, SOP is to use sunscreen always. Who's not using sunscreen at this point anyway? So that's best practice and please stick to that. If you're not. I know it's winter, but you should you should still be wearing sunscreen daily. I mean, we're in LA. Sun still shines. <laughs> I was gonna say the best anti aging thing I did for myself this year was to tint my car windows. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Yeah, so true, especially here. Um, but yeah, after going through some of the data, one of the cool things that I found was. Um, this might sound very not glamorous to you, but they did a comparison test of 10% versus 30% oh, gluconolactone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something you hear us say a lot is comparative studies yeah. of any sort is really hard to find in skincare. So you know, people come to us and ask things like, oh, but what is the best antioxidant? Yeah. Or what is the best hydrator? Yeah. Well, I can't really tell you because they're not, there's not really any data out there that puts these things against each other. So comparative yeah. studies. It's funny you bring that up because for some reason, mm -hmm. as I went down this rabbit hole, there's a lot of comparative studies here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have this like, I have this tinfoil hat theory that mm -hmm. because no one can actively patent these molecules, there's mm. more comparative studies. Oh, so they can't say this is my molecule. Yeah. So they're like, oh, hold on, mine's better than yours. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be uh, like, but do you use it in this <laughs> way with these actives. So anyway, I like it. I like that. Mm. All right. Um, so they did a comparison study um, comparing 10% versus 30% gluconolactone. Um, not glamorous at all. They found both to actually be significantly hydrating. Um, but there wasn't a difference between the two. So I thought that was kind of cool. It might not be that exciting because you want to hear about wrinkles and fine lines and pigmentation, but knowing that you're using high levels of gluconolactone and it's hydrating is kind of cool. 
I actually find it really humorous because I think you just hit a point of like things that might interest a chemist, but really people <laughs> don't care. About. Why you gotta <laughs> call me out like that? <laughs> you know, like, you know, comparative studies and but it's our so listeners cool. are like, so cool. wow, can you get to the point or not? <laughs> Uh, okay that's kind of fair <laughs> <laughs> all right um all right here here fine fine that might not be good let me try another one all right mm-hmm. um they actually looked at how gluconolactone being more gentle plays with other actives um this was actually in a textbook so i had trouble finding the nitty-gritty details of this but gluconolactone has actually been looked at as in pairings with things like high levels of azelaic acid and even tretinoin so 15% azelaic acid, um, they was used in combination with PHA cleanser and PHA moisturizer, sorry, um, and it's found to have um, less side effects, um, but still really great results. And then they even paired it with 0.1% tretinoin, which is actually quite high, um, and found that it is also compatible. So um, we used to mention about how gluconolactone, we like that pairing with retinol. Here's a little bit of proof. We're going to look into this more, um, but we think it's a great pairing. This is why we recently launched our retinal product yeah. in the double play. Yeah. And already we're getting questions like, oh, I'm using your exfoliant. Yeah. So like, should, I, should we dial it back? Is yeah. it still okay to use a gold standard? And all our, good questions. All good questions. And our go-to recommendation is if you're not sure, you know, stop exfoliating for a little bit. Yeah. But if you want to incur corporate exfoliation um start with the baby steps yeah. and this is our 30 percent gluconolactone with 15 percent lactic acid combo yeah. just to kind of ease yourself into that exfoliation yeah so i really love this combo um it works for me i'm actually someone that doesn't work too well with glycolic acid especially mm-hmm. when i'm using things like adapalene or high levels of retinol so um fully approve of this combo um next thing so Gluconolactone is kind of the main ingredient in this mm. space, but lactobionic acid actually has some cool data as well. Um, there is a study that um, looked at 8% lactobionic acid and found that after 12 weeks, it is a tiny study, um, but it found that after eight weeks it was able to help reduce fine lines and wrinkles, brighten skin, and improve skin elasticity. So I did want to just share that PHAs, there's more to it than just gluconolactone Um yeah, so that's that's really that. Um. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you, Gloria. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, right. so, but that's not all. Um, aside- but wait, there's more. <laughs> there's more. <laughs> I can't wait for us to edit this one. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so... But there's more research. Um, You think of these ingredients as exfoliants, but it's actually been pretty well looked at as a antioxidant. I just want to show everyone our neutral fast because it's like, da 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 Cosmoceuticals <laughs> Journal! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, so if you want some light reading, you can look at this textbook called Procedures in Cosmetics, titled Cosmo- Cosmoceuticals. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they go into how they looked at gluconolactone and lactobionic acid as an antioxidant. Um, they tested it with things like a banana peel and could it prevent it from browning, um, which Gloria and I were immediately like, banana cruelty. <laughs> banana, oh, did the banana ask to be brown? Yeah, no. we'll, we'll show a picture here. They've cut up um, little samples of banana peel and then basically used these solutions to cover and see if how the browning uh, progressed. Some of them turn black <laughs> how weak some of this yeah they mm. did yeah so it's pretty cool um they've looked at it um in that manner um so i thought that was kind of interesting um i would say that compared to some of the other plant extracts we looked at for antioxidants we're like actually pretty well studied as an antioxidant. Actually, like, you know what that's a great point yeah. um kind of going off of our last episode about eye creams yeah antioxidant studies is another one that makes us go <laughs> you look at these data, especially bar graphs, is like super close yeah. to each other. And then the researcher is like, yeah, this one's a 
significantly yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay. And then finally, this is probably another one that's dumped in the category of chemists care, but consumers might not. Um, there's Please a care. <laughs> we care, therefore, so should you. Yeah. They looked at um, the humectant properties of gluconolactone um, in comparison to things like glycolic acid, even lactic acid, a uh, propylene glycol and found it to perform as a better humectant um, than the rest. So I thought that was kind of nice. Actually, when I was going through the notes, so Victoria <laughs> compiled the first pass of these notes yeah. and did most of the research. And when I saw the bar graph, I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> we always talk about how like it tingles the chemists. <laughs> <laughs> we always talk about how. <laughs> How it's um, people ask us like, okay, I'm really dry and I'm looking for the best hydrator. And the thing is like, it's mm. and I think we wrote in our book too. It's like, sadly, there's not a lot of head-to-head data for mm. us to say, yeah, like this ingredient is a hundred percent better than whatever, mm. or like that kelp you're using, yeah, that's the best humectant ever. But this is about as close as it's gonna get. So it's really cool to see that you know PHAs can act as a very, very, very effective hydrator. Yeah comparison study <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's phas um we're moving on to ha's all right gloria take it away oh ready all board the ha <laughs> we've been here before so um the big three we usually cover are mandalic mm. um lactic and glycolic acid mm. and do we care about malic i don't give it <laughs> do we care about tartar i don't give up <laughs> Wow, this old fashion is really packing a kick. Just want you guys to know this is our essentially our virtual holiday party. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, um, the reason why we focus on these three um, because they have the most data, and they're compared to the other ones are. The smaller ones with yeah. well understood data. So like tartaric, malic, citric, they might have one or two maybe kind of interesting paper yeah. here and there, but we don't even really consider them to be true exfoliators. Mm-hmm. And I even wanted to add that like when we talk about these ingredients and what they do for your skin, there's two things to consider. One is the pathway. Yes. So things like, okay, glycolic acid loosens up the bond between dead cells and that's how it leaves earlier. And it can be validated and proven by um, sometimes researchers will dye your skin, Mm. something that goes pretty deep, and then they apply one patch with um, glycolic, one Mm. patch with nothing, and see how fast that dye leaves your skin. And Mm -hmm. that's kind of how you see it. Some, a lot of these other acids, like malic, such as, they don't really look at it in that light. Sometimes they just apply and be like, I don't know, it's a little brighter. (laughs) Also, there's just no data. There's just nothing. <laughs> Bottom line, no data. <laughs> There's nothing. We would like to give you the good news, but we can't. So there you go. Yeah. Um, so Mandelic acid. <laughs> this one, out of the three, is probably the more mysterious one. Yes. Um, it is yes. the bigger molecule. Mm-hmm. I will say, I think it's a lot more popular in Asian skincare. Yes. Yeah. I think in Asian skincare, they're a lot more risk averse. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't find a high level glycolic uh, glycolic acid so much in Asian skincare, mm-hmm. they would rather give you like a 10% mandelic or 18% just so like, like it won't burn your skin at yes. all. You know, they play a little safer in that department. Um, but mandelic acid is really great. Uh, traditionally as a chemical peel, it's used in combination with salicylic acid, mm-hmm. used to treat oily skin. And Slightly lipid soluble. Yes, so it kind of, if you, we'll put up the structure of salicylic acid and mandelic here. You'll see that it's pretty similar, mm-hmm. and that's why like people have kind of thought of it as a as a tangent to sell acid in some yeah. cases. Yeah. Um, but uh, it isn't super duper well studied what like daily yeah. application of lower doses yes. of mandelic does for you. Yeah. And Victoria found some great new studies on it. Yeah. So uh, recently, I, I stumbled upon one that looked at just four. <laughs> Every episode, yeah. <laughs> that looked at just 4% mandelic acids, very small study of N equals 24. Um, and they applied it every day, and they did find that it even helped improve things like your lower eyelid elasticity, firming of the skin. Um, so I thought 
that was actually cool. Like even as such a low percentage, you could get that kind of results, um, which as Gloria mentioned, if you actually try to look at mandelic acid, it's pretty sparse. It like, is really especially hard. Like Gummer Galactic and yeah. um, Glycolic. Exactly. Um, so that's one side that gives a, some semblance of good news. Um, another study actually looked at 10% mandelic acid in comparison to 10% glycolic acid. Another comparative study. <laughs> <laughs> and this tested 120 subjects. So large, um, loads, really <laughs> healthy sample. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so they wanted to look at in terms of treating acne. Um, but they did find that after 12 weeks, glycolic acid was still the better champion in this category. Which is really interesting because mm-hmm. glycolic, so this is something that we find um, challenging from marketing to communicate because yeah. you'll see you'll see charts and content creators that make charts. It's like, this acid is best for yeah. this, that acid is best for that. But sometimes it's like not really how it works. Mm-hmm. So glycolic is proven in almost everything you can think of. Yeah. But it's just the downside to glycolic isn't that it doesn't work for things like mm-hmm. acne. It's because it might be too harsh for some people. Yes. So, yeah. But in this study, the lack uh, the mandelic acid did work, just not as well as the glycolic. There you go. Yeah. Yep. And again, like, uh, I just want to say that you might think that you're currently using mandelic acid for, you know, to help with um, managing acne congestion things and breakouts. And if it's working for you, the idea is to not, you don't have to change, you Mm. know, it's just a matter of just giving you some perspective in comparison to these other acids. The, um, okay. And then finally, another comparative study. I am, (laughs) so we've hit the jackpot guys. (laughs) So we should do another acid episode. Oh my god, more of this feeling. You know, less episodes where I have to stare at the screen again. <laughs> so there's no conclusion. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, so this one, they want to look at just 4% hydroquinone alone versus 4% hydroquinone plus 10% mandelic acid. Um, they, it was actually for 100 patients, so another healthy size study. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so um, they actually found that for just 4% hydroquinone, that group, um, less than 20% of the group showed significant improvement versus the hydroquinone and mandelic acid combination. They said about 50% of the group showed improvement. So that, I thought that was really cool. That's actually really, really cool. Yeah. And that, for the hydroquinone group, I'm almost shocked that's how low it is. I'm sure they have like a much higher bar mm-hmm. to kind of signify what counts as improvement. Exactly. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah.